Hi, if you've been here before, welcome back. If it's your first time on this channel and just landed here somehow, give you a little bit of an overview of what I'm up to here. I'm currently sitting inside my 1974 C-Ray SRV 240 Weekender. Um, it's a boat I bought a couple of years ago as a project boat. When I got it, it was completely rotted out. The stringers, everything were rotted. Since then, I have completely rebuilt it structurally. Uh, take a look at my older videos on this series and you'll see everything I've done with it. Uh, link is below. Um, currently, I'm working on the interior of the cabin. And with that said, why don't we get right to what I've been working on. One of the things I need to figure out is where I'm going to be putting all of my electrical components for the, the cabin. What does that include? So this is the fuse panel I'm going to use for the cabin. The main power coming out in here and then the various circuits will be fed by this and there'll be blade type fuses going in here. I've got to figure out where I'm going to put this. This so the fuse panel will have a positive feed from the uh, house battery bank. The negative feed will go to this. There's a terminal in there and then screws to go out from there. And then the positive wires from this fuse box will then go to my Switches. I haven't decided what I'm going to use, whether I'm going to use little toggle switches that are illuminated with a pretty blue light on the end or rocker switches, again, with a little blue light. Blue lights are important. So the way wiring will work is there'll be a positive feed to the fuse block, a negative feed to this terminal block. And then for each circuit, the negative wire will feed from the terminal block to the light or the fan or whatever it is. For the positive wire, that will then go from this to the switch, whichever I decide to use, and then from there to whatever it's powering. So this doesn't need to be easily accessible at any time. The fuse panel does. Hopefully I'll need, won't need to change fuses, but in case I do, I want it to be accessible. The other thing I was thinking about is this hole that I cut last time for my switches. The idea is, you know, the switches would be mounted in here, but I wasn't thinking clearly. I don't know if any of you guys do that, think about things in the middle of the night. Well, it was about five in the morning the other day that I suddenly realized that this wasn't going to work like this. If you remember for the shore power panel, I cut another piece of wood for the back to recess this and then this panel mounts on from the front. I wasn't thinking that clearly for this one. For some reason I was thinking, oh, I'll just mount the panel to the back and then just have the switches coming out that I'll cut a panel that's just a little bigger than the hole. Problem is that's not gonna work so well because how am I supposed to mount the panel in once this is in place? If I try to mount the panel before I put this, I'm going to have to leave a lot of excess wire to be able to wire it before I lift the whole cabinet in place. So I'm thinking that what I'm going to do is once I pull this whole thing out, I'm going to cut this a little bit larger, do the same thing that I did over here, and then I'll make an electrical panel with the switches on it that I can just mount on once I have it all wired. So what I think I will do is what I'd like to do is come up with a place to put the fuse panel that I don't have to run very long runs of wire from the fuse panel to the switches because there's only one wire feeding this and then every circuit has to be fed from this to the swing, same switch panel. So a nice idea to keep this fairly short. What I'm actually looking at right now is I can probably mount this right up in here. It's uh, kind of out of sight but easily accessible. What I can do is mount, once I mount, put all this cabinet work back in before I put this panel on, I can mount this fuse panel there. And then what I'm thinking is for this 
ground the negative terminals, I can take this and mount it up inside here. This doesn't need to be accessible all the time until, you know, once the wiring's done, it's done. What I'm thinking is if I, if I put those two in there, that means I can easily run all the wires to those, leave the wires hanging out for the switches, very short run from there to here, just drill one little hole up there for the wires wire the switch panel and then put it in. For lighting in here, I have some little LED lights like this. I'm thinking of still building a little wood box here to cover this strangeness and then mounting a little light here to give me some general light there. I have some longer LED lights. I'm thinking of putting one in here and then one in the head in the bathroom. I also have some LED strip lighting um, that I can put uh, in places like underneath the edge of the shelf just for ambient light. Um, again, that's why I need the switches here. Uh, I'm also going to put some ventilation fans in here because I want to keep the moisture out and the humidity out and in the summer we're going to need a lot of ventilation so um, that's the other thing we're gonna, I'm going to need to figure out. The other part I need to do with these, with these cabinets is if you look right now this cabinet, it's attached to the bottom, but it's not attached to the top at all. And so what I really need to do is mark locations on like this panel where I can put blocking in while I have it out of the boat. So that when I reinstall it, I can make things a lot more secure. Even this countertop is just sitting on top of the, the bottom panels, which are just held together with a couple of quick grip clamps. The whole thing is kind of, kind of like a house of cards ready to fall apart. Also, when I take this out before I, when I remove the rest of the cabinets before I pull this panel out, if you remember in an earlier video, I'm going to cut an opening in here with an access door and just put some more storage in there because that's kind of an empty space under the dash of the boat. Um, I didn't do that yet, but when I pull this out, I'm going to need to, before I pull it out, measure it, figure out how much clearance I have so that once I have it back in the shop, I can cut the hole and build a box in the back for the storage and make a door on there. So um, right now everything's kind of test fit and it's just doing all the calculations. So once I had planned all the locations for the electrical systems for the cabin, I then went around and marked all the edges of where the paneling meets the fiberglass hull. The idea being that once I remove the paneling in the cabinets, I would know how far I need to go with the vinyl hull liner once I get to installing that. I also marked the back of anywhere the panels uh, meet the cabinet work so I know where I need to add a little bit of wood blocking for support and things like that. Before I started removing the panels and the cabinet work to do more work on them, there was still one more piece that I had to build. It was a small uh, wooden box, uh, for lack of a better explanation, that I wanted to make to hide a kind of a strange section of the the ceiling or the inner hull that I thought would be a little bit hard to put uh, the vinyl over. So decided to make that to just be three small pieces of wood. As usual, I made a cardboard template at first and then uh, cut the pieces out of plywood and came and test fit them. I am going to actually attach the piece to the uh, panel that's kind of around the window before I reinstall it back in the boat. Then I proceeded to start dismantling the cabinet work and the paneling. Once I got to the the panel that's to the right of the, the galley sink, I did some measuring to figure out how much space I had behind it and up and down and in every direction for, for cutting a hole for a door as well as how much space I had for a cabinet behind that, a storage cabinet. I then took that panel out and brought it in the shop and cut a hole, cut a door into it. And then I proceeded to build a wooden box essentially for a cabinet behind there. The other thing I'm gonna do with this cabinet is, this is the right side, this is the top. So this top corner in here, to come into here is I need to drill a hole in there still because this is where the fuse panel for the main bolt power is going to mount, right in here. It'll be accessed so you can get through the door. That's the plan anyway. So when I bought that boat, it was 
largely dismantled inside and those hinges were just laid around inside so I kept them because they're perfectly good hinges. These latches, push button latches so that when they're closed they're fairly flush, they don't stick out too much. Bought those online so I'm going to try to use these. The old hinge, new latch on the door for this cabinet that I'm making. Let's see how that works out. First step is to cut the hinge to the right length. Once I've done that, in here, because of the thickness of the hinge, I'm going to have to notch out the door and the panel just enough to make the hinge fit so that it hit, doesn't hit on this side. So I think I'm going to try to get that to fit first before I mount the box to the back of this panel because then it'll be a lot easier to get at the back to test fit it all. Once I get that all working, then once I get the hinge all test fit, I can mount that box to the back of this panel. Probably before I put the box in though, I will probably install some extra shelves and dividers in there because right now it's just a box and vertically it's kind of tall and short so I think I'll make some shelves in there but first thing is I think I'll get the door to swing cleanly. Got the hinge shortened, it's very simple, stick it on the vise, cut it off with a cutting disc and the grinder. Gotta take a break because I can't figure out where else to put clamps. So I have the wooden box for the shelf installed, shelving installed, waiting for the glue to set, I'll unclamp it and then I'm going to try to install this latch. Now the cabinet and the uh, door are built out of half inch plywood. This latch requires something thicker than that for this shoulder. For this to be flush, the gap needs to be a bit more than half an inch. So I found this old piece of mahogany in the back shed, cut a little piece, glued it on there, and hopefully that will give me the added thickness that I can attach the latch right there. Now the latch won't be installed centered because it would hit my shelf. So I got this uh, side piece test fit in here. Check out the clamp in there so it doesn't pop out. The latch on it. it opens up. See if it'll stay open. And up in here is where I'm thinking of putting the fuse panels. So still have to cut a hole up in there. Got it to be a bit of a tighter fit than I expected. Up there, I I have probably a quarter inch clearance between the top. So now I gotta figure out where I have to cut the hole for the cabling. And here we have a hole for wiring. At this point, I think this piece is ready for cleaning up and finishing. Next step is to dismantle the lower part of the cabinet and use another hinge and latch like that to install this as a door for that lower part. Drilled the hole for the faucet, inch and a quarter hole. And that will be the door for the front of the cabinet. 
soon to be installed in that. So this is the door on uh, the back side of it. What I'm going to do here is because it's down on a lower cabinet, I don't want to be bashing my knees on the hinges. And the right hinge better. This is the top hinge. I'll put it on there. You can see how much the hinge sticks out. If I put this strip of mahogany behind there, I can make the hinge a lot more flush so it doesn't stick out as far and less likely to scrape my knees off. That's the theory anyway. So I have uh, strips of mahogany glued, uh, clamped, waiting for the glue to dry. They're just to build up a thickness on the inside of the cabinet so that the hinges will fit a little bit better so that the hinge pin doesn't protrude out into the walkway in the cabin so we don't bash our knees on it. Next thing I'm going to do once this glue is all set is I'm going to cut a piece of three quarter inch plywood to put right here. Uh, that will serve as a place to attach the door latch. And then I'm going to also need to figure out probably something across the top and the bottom. Actually, that's the bottom, that's the top. On the inside is a door stop so that when you close the door, the door doesn't swing inwards. I haven't quite figured out yet what I'm doing inside the cabinet because I can't close it off like I did with the upper cabinet uh, because this door is also going to be my access for things like the through hall fittings and the sink drain and things like that. So I'm going to need to figure out what I'm going to do for storage space so that things that we put in there don't float around all over the place. But I also can't block off my access to things I need to get to. Clamping some blocking onto the back. This is for the left end of the galley cabinet. And then the um, upper panel where the electrical panels are will hit, sit against these blocks. More support blocking for the front of the countertop. This is just an extra support for the back of the countertop since it's basically going to be spanning the two side panels so that the back doesn't warp over time. Just trying to stiffen up by putting a piece of plywood. Just clamped it on there, glued it, glued it, clamped it. Once the glue sets, I've got to sand it and then the countertop is ready for, for finishing. So, the first piece is stained. And there is a piece of teak, a little bit dirty, but some of the teak I'm going to use for the trim. So once I had the three main parts of the galley cabinet, the top and the left side and the front, kind of ready to go otherwise, I put a coat of stain on the countertop just to see how that was going to work out. And. Uh, now I'm kind of just waiting. Uh, I've ordered some stuff online and uh, until it shows up, it seems to be delayed because of this whole pandemic thing. Uh, once what I've ordered shows up, uh, there's some fasteners, things like that, then I can finish up the roughing and the wiring uh, in the cabin, any of the wiring that's going to be hidden by the hull liner. So I'm kind of waiting for that stuff to show up. And once, once that's here, then I will get the wiring in uh, and then I can install all of the vinyl hull liner in here. As far as all the paneling and the cabinet work, I don't really want to go and do all the staining and the finishing otherwise, uh, because it'll just have to wait in the shop until I get the hull liner in. So I kind of want to wait until I get the hull liner in place, and then I want to go and finish up the cabinet work just so it doesn't get banged up being moved around too much. Um, so hope you guys enjoyed it. If you liked the video, click the like button. If you haven't done so already, 
subscribe that way you'll be up to speed uh, next time I'm working on things and uh, if you haven't seen the videos leading up to this just look for the link below this video and uh, you can catch up on the other 13 videos leading up to this anyway until next time stay safe